to get me to watch a harem fan service romance anime it takes a couple of things for one and the major factor is it has to be different it has to be something very unique, something I don't normally see, and uses a concept that I don't see often in the harem genre. And that would be everyday life with monster girls. I have actually read the manga. This manga is nothing, so to say, new. It is actually, in the fundamental levels, it's very generic, I will be honest. But what makes it so unique is the characters. And that is the main thing you look at when it comes to harem series in general. You always look at the characters to see if the characters interest you because usually when you start a series like this you, you shouldn't expect like anything massively different from the average harem fan service series besides the characters, said characters in setting. And that's exactly what you get with everyday life with Monster Girls. You get a setting to where a guy one day has a fateful appearance of this Naga girl, Mia, that comes to his door and then she is going to be staying with him and he is going to be the host. And he cannot have any sexual interaction with her at all. For instance, if he does, there is a chance that he will be sent and fined and go to jail and she will be deported out of the country back to her homeland. So, right now, this already sets up an obstacle between the main male character and the future love interest in the series. For instance, why he cannot do anything romantic or, you know, sexual with any of these characters. Even though there is a lot of sexual things going on throughout this episode, you get my point what I'm getting at. So, the main thing is with this series, I'm just going to straight up and be honest. If you are not a fan of harem anime, like if you don't like harems, you don't like... You know, I guess generic harems, fan service, and romance and stuff. You're probably not going to like this series. But, if you like the unique aspect of Monster Girls, you probably will like this series. It just comes down to if the characters make you want to watch this series or not. See, if you don't like the characters, like if you, if this first episode, you watch this first episode and you probably don't like the characters, you might not like this series. Because it's going to be about the love interest being Monster Girls. That's what it's going to be. You're going to have different type of Monster Girls that are going to be introduced and then fall in love with our main male character and so if you don't like this concept you might not like this series and that's kind of my first impressions and my recommendation if you want to start or not start this series now when it came to the fundamentals of following the manga like when it you know adapted the anime's first episode it followed the manga properly from what i can remember of reading volume one it followed the manga almost to the letter the only thing they actually axed out when it came to this episode was the nipples. Uh, yeah, there was nudity in this series. Like, right at the beginning, you should see where Mia, she has, like, nipples all over, you know, our main male character in the bed. Like, so the point I'm getting at is, there is some censorship going on with this series. And judging by the way it was used, there is a possibility that when the BDs come out, there will be the uncensored version with the nips and everything all around. So, if you want to watch this uncensored, it, it has a chance of not being any different when the BDs come out, but if you want to take your chance and wait until the BDs come out, you can wait until see if there is uncensored nudity in the series. But I will say, that's the only thing I could really point out that was really wrong with this episode when it came to the adaptation. It was the censorship, but that's to be expected when it comes to anime nowadays. Even Two Love Rue Darkness is getting fucking censored out the ass, but you should expect that. But the main reason why we like Two Love Rue is because when those BDs come around, hot damn. So, the point I'm getting at is, is if you like this first episode, you're probably going to like the series. If you dislike this first episode, you might not like this series. It, depending if you like the next girls, but that that's a large if, because if you have a disdain towards harems, you're not going to like it. So, th that is my thoughts. Animation, for the most part, for a harem series, I actually say it's pretty good. It's a pretty good animation art style, and it suits the series, and especially the manga, with what it shows with this first episode. So I have no complaints on that. When it comes to the ending song, however, oh my god, that ending song sounds so damn good. I think that's my personal favorite. Like, so far from what I've heard, I'm going to go watch Overlord after I'm done with this review. I really like that ending song of... Every day's life with Monster Girls. That, that ending song was so good. I'm going to be listening to that for the rest of the day, most likely. Unless Overlord has a breathtaking, you know, opening and ending. But for now, though, that is my first impressions of Every Day Life with Monster Girls. If you like the series, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to say right now, Mia, best girl, okay? She is fucking best girl. I mean, seriously. 
Or who, uh, what else are you going to see in a harem series where a snake chick just grabs someone, strangles them, drags them into the bed and all that? I mean, you're not going to see that shit anywhere. So, tell me your thoughts. Love you all so much. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.